I am going to uh, start with my questions. Um, in my opening statement, I said I am concerned that Wabo B. De La Cruz is in which the Ninth Circuit used the insular cases to uphold Article 12 of the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Constitution and the restriction of land ownership to persons of Northern Marianas descent might have a completely different outcome today, 30 years later. In that time, the federal court has said Northern Marianas descent is a race-based classification and not Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh co-wrote an amicus brief challenging race-based voting in Rice v. Cayetano. So anyone who wants to protect Article 12 should be thinking of alternative legal theories or even new law to support exclusive NMD land ownership to protect culture and tradition because the insular cases may not help. As a matter of fact, Commonwealth and federal courts have held as legal fee simple ownership of land claims made by individuals who were neither domiciled in the Northern Marianas in 1950, nor were, were they ever citizens of the Trump territory of the Pacific Islands. So Professor Villazor, some quick yes or no questions, please. In Wabo, the Ninth Circle said the equal protection guarantee to all US citizens by the 14th Amendment did not apply to the Northern Marianas in the case of uh, all property ownership, correct? Yes. The Wabo decision rested on the conclusion that some aspects of the 14th Amendment are not, quote, fundamental in the international sense, correct? Yes. And this idea that some constitutional protections are fundamental and others can be taken away by act of Congress derives from Balzac v. Puerto Rico, one of the insular cases, correct? That's correct. To determine whether property ownership was a fundamental right, the Wabo court applied the standard using King B. Morton. Quote, the importance of the constitutional right at stake makes it essential that a decision rests on a solid understanding of the present conditions in the territory. It must be based on facts. You pointed out in your 2018 law review article that present conditions in the Marianas are that a significant portion of land is no longer in native lands, but rather leased or occupied for decades by non-indigenous groups, correct? Yes. So a court today might look at this change pattern and conclude that no permanent control of land is no, that permanent control of land is no longer fundamental to the people of the Marianas, correct? It might. Professor, there can be exemptions from the equal protections of the U.S. Constitution if there are compelling public interests, correct? If there are compelling government interests, that's correct. And public is the government. So I say yes. In Wabo, the court found a public interest in protecting land ownership because land is the basis of family organization in the islands, passes from generation to generation, contributing to the well-being of family members, correct? Yes. Yet in 1985, the term of land leases was extended from 40 years to 55 years, so that conceivably two generations of Northern Marianas descent would derive no direct benefit from family land or have any say in how that land is used, correct? Yes. And in 1990, when the Wabo Court decided that equal protection did not apply, only persons of at least one quarter Chamorro or Kalinian could own land, correct? Yes. Yet in 2014, the constitution was amended so that a person with any Chamorro or Kalinian blood could own land. So instead of requiring a Chamorro or Kalinian grandparent, now you only need a great, 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 and on and on and on grandparent. The Wabo court noted that the looser the fit, the more likely the asserted interest is mere pretext. The fit between who is NMD and who is not has become very, very loose since Wabo was decided, has it not? That is correct. And that loose fit weakens the argument there is a compelling public interest in exempting Article 12 from the equal protection of the 14th Amendment, correct? That will be correct under both the insular cases and equal protection law. Thank you. As I said, I'm not here to take sides on the question of Article 12. This is an issue for the people of the Marianas to debate and decide. What I do want to establish, however, is there are reasons to think that if a court today were to look at whether the equal protection of the 14th Amendment 
applies in the case of Article 12, the conclusion might be very different from it from than it was 30 years ago in Wabo. And if anyone is holding on to these races in similar cases as a way of keeping Article 12 afloat, they may be holding on to an anchor, not a life preserver, because the next time around, the insular cases may not protect Article 12. Thank you. Um